Hi everyone, it's Steve here at Steve's RC Shop and RC Winches in Leicester. Uh, today's topic is going to be servo bypass kits and different servos. I'm going to come to that in a second. Uh, just before we do, as most people out of you, uh, most people out there will know that my main line of business is winches, waterproof controllers, waterproof winches, winch bumpers, hooks, lines, ground anchors, anything you can think of winch related. Yeah, feel free to give me a shout. So, servo bypass kits. I've recently taken down my old video because uh, I've had quite a lot of emails and messages over the past few weeks. Could I explain some, some extra points about them, what they do, how they work, how you plug them in. So I'm going to answer all of your questions here. So, let's get on with it. So, today, as a demonstration vehicle, we've got a Traxxas TRX4. Yeah, brilliant piece of kit. I've got several of them. I love them to bits. When you buy them, they will come obviously with the stock servo. You might be lucky, it might last for a long time. You might want to upgrade it straight away, or you might want to replace the servo when this fails. So, just you know, without going into depth too much, take into consideration the amount of weight you've got on the front, whether you've put brass upgrades on, whether you're running 1.9 tyres or 2.2 tyres, whatever, because obviously the more stress on the front end here will put more stress on the servo that you choose. So it's always a good idea to choose the right one. I don't sell a massive amount of servos, to be honest, so these are just here really for demonstration. I think, in my opinion, that when you go to a 20 kilogram or a 25 or a 35 or if you want to start spending money on silly things like Savoxes and there are lots of other servos out there so there's not just these but the, the principle is when you upgrade it okay if you're running stock electrics you're only going to be getting 5 volts at the receiver so if you put one of these in this will run up to 6.8 volts but you're still only going to get 5 volts to it if you put a Savox in this particular one, this will run up to 7.4 volts. It will work at 5 volts, but it, it's just not getting the amount of power to it directly from the receiver. Because, like I say, the receivers are only giving out 5 volts and 1 amps as well, 1 amps maximum. So when you've got all your other electrics on, some of these servos you get yeah, are really power hungry. So it can stop causing other problems with your car, as in your lights can start dimming, you can get brownouts. You're trying to pull too much power off the receiver and they can burn out in some instances so one thing you can do to eliminate that and to get maximum power to your servo is use a servo bypass kit now this is not a new thing it's not something that we've invented they've been around for a long time but we do them here as a simple plug and play unit and there's a little pack of electrics in here which is basically telling these leads how much power to put to your servo so you can have it set you know four volts five volts six volts seven volts seven and a half volts ten volts and of course that will also depend on how much power is going in because you can't have more power going out than what's going in so here's just one of our demo cars here it's uh, a fairly standard trx4 yeah all right it's got a bumper on the front and a winch i have got a savox servo on there but the Savox servo is plugged directly into the receiver. It only gets 5 volts. I don't take this one out and play with it, so I'm not bothered. However, this is what we will do. If you're running stock electrics, the XL5 ESC has got a little JST plug on the side of it, mainly used for the Traxxas lighting kit. But this is where the servo bypass kit is going to plug in on this setup. If you've got a different ESC, and you're running different battery connectors and you still want to use a servo bypass kit then we can do these XT90 link leads with a JST splitter off we do these in XT90, XT60, Deans and we do them with one tail, two tails, three tails so if you're running lighting kits and other electrics then you can still spur off, not a problem the actual servo bypass kits themselves they come with coded and marked cables it's impossible to plug them in wrong but they also come with a full set of instructions with my telephone number and email address so i'm here seven days a week for technical support 
So without messing around now and me babbling on, I'm just going to explain how you plug them in and what they do. So my transmitter's turned on. I'm just going to power the ESC up. Okay, I have actually got a Savox servo in here, but it's plugged direct into the receiver. I've only got five volts there. Still a lot better than the standard one because obviously it's a more powerful servo, but it won't run at its maximum potential because it's only running five volts and maximum of one amp. One amp, you know, on some power hungry servos, and there's a lot of different branded servos out there, um, you know, will need more than one amp sometimes. So the servo bypass kits are an example uh, or an excellent way of bypassing the power straight from your receiver. These ones here that I do, okay, these will give five amps. So, you know, even if you're running big, big, big powerful servo, yeah, there's not many out there at all that's going to pull anywhere near five amps. So, as you can see, yeah, turning left and right, no issues, no dramas, and it works fine. What I'm going to do now very quickly is I'm just going to unplug. I've got my servo here and it's just plugged on a, a bit of an extension lead. So I'm just going to unplug it from the extension lead. The servo bypass now, like I say, you cannot plug it in wrong. Okay, that's going to go into there. And then this. In fact, what we'll do is we'll just go straight into the receiver. Okay, and hopefully, well you will, you will see the difference. Okay, so you can see instantly the wheels are turning quicker. If I had these, if I had two cars side by side, one with the servo bypass kit and one without, you, you, you would clearly see the difference. I suppose it is a bit hard and a bit unfair on video sometimes, but... Trust me, they're very, very effective. So that servo now, okay, I've got this one set at 7.4 volts inside. And if you've got a servo that will run at 8 volts, or it's only going to run at 6 or 6.8, then we can preset them inside. The boxes that they come in, 100% waterproof. Okay, absolutely 100% waterproof. And they'll run from any battery, okay, and provide 5 amps. So, like I said, there's no point, in my opinion, putting one of these in, or one of these, or one of these, or one of these, if you're not going to run it at its maximum potential. Excellent idea. Run a servo bypass kit with a higher powered servo, so you get full power to it. It doesn't affect any of your other electrics, and it's happy days. Thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, just pop me an email or give me a call. Bye-bye.